Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today uh, we're going to be spending a little bit of time over here with this uh, Kearney Tracker Model 2D milling machine that I recently picked up. Really haven't done anything with it yet other than get it into the shop, get it wired up and kind of working. Uh, but when I picked this machine up, it had a spindle that I'm not sure if it's been modified or whether they just got an accessory on here. But right here on the spindle, uh, there should be a 30 taper, a Kearney Trekker 30 taper spindle up here in the top that takes a special K and T collet that you, uh, that came with these machines. It, it was, it's a little bit of an unusual collet. Uh, they're not very easy to find or what have you. But when I got it, it actually had on it a, um, was this is a, one of the more modern type collet holders. Um, let's see what it is. Yeah, this is an ER40 uh, collet holder uh, that's on here. And I've had lots of people that have come in like, hey, that's not the original spindle in here. And uh, we're going to be investigating that today and seeing if it is the original spindle or whether this is just an accessory that was added on that can be removed and go back to the original spindle. Um, and then hopefully be able to test the run out, make sure we don't have any excessive run out or anything like that going on here today. So that's kind of what I want to try to accomplish. Just check this machine out and get it ready to play, start playing with. So just taking a little bit closer look here at uh, what we've got on here. And again, I think that what's happened here is that this bottom piece down here is an add-on that's in here. Normally there's, like I said, a, a special 30 taper, uh, piece that fits up inside of this like this. It is a little bit different from a normal 30 taper. The taper part is a 30 taper. This is a more typical 30 taper uh, tool holder. Uh, but if you look here, it doesn't have the bottom flange on it. And we got these little um, catches in there. That would go up in there. And this is actually just a collet holder for a 20 taper collet. The 20 taper K&T collets look like this. The uh, 30 taper collets, K and T collets, look like this. And this is what you put your tools in, and you can take, you can kind of fit a regular 30 taper collet like this up in here, uh, but it uses instead of having a draw bar in the top like a normal 30 taper to pull it in, there's a collar. This is one of the uh, collars that holds um, a cutter like this in. It holds it in from the bottom and tightens up on the bottom and it uh, kind of holds it all in place. It's a little bit different type setup, but that's just the way these uh, mills were originally made. So again, I think what has happened here is that this is a uh, 30 taper to ER40 collet holder that someone has put in here. Uh, why would they do that? Well, the ER40 collets are kind of a standard thing in today's world. You can easily get those uh, collets. I did, this did not come with any ER40 collets, but this is an ER40 collet holder. Whereas these uh, K&T collets, uh, they're somewhat rare. I mean, you have to really look hard to find these. And uh, while I think there's some guys that have kind of had some new ones made, it's not really an off-the-shelf item. Uh, that you can just go to a typical catalog and order these things to replace them. So what I want to do is see if I can get this off. There is a, uh, a some pin holders in here. So this, I think, is a cap that screws up like where this cap would have gone, uh, I think. So what I want to do is try to get this off. Now, uh, there's supposed to be a spindle lock up in the top that will lock the spindle in place and allow us to get that off. I need to get up there and try to find that and get it locked in place so that we can uh, put a spanner wrench on this and try to back this piece out. That's what I'm hoping I can do. I'm hoping that this is not a permanent um, addition. While an ER40 collet is kind of desirable in some ways, I would really like to get this back to the original setup if at all possible, just because I kind of like the, 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 the idea of having an original setup. So let's see if we can get this off. So according to the manual, uh, there is a spindle lock up here in the top 
this is cover opens up and lets you change the belt system for the change the speeds of the spindle. So I'm gonna climb up here and get an idea. Now this machine, uh, you had to climb up here to change the belt settings pretty regular. And it's kind of neat, there's actually a step built into the machine over here for you to step up there. And there's actually a handhold cast into the casting over here for you to grab into. So it's made for you to climb up on like this. And uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna climb uh, this machine and there's a little cam lock up here and let me see okay there yeah i see right here in the front there is a uh, little piece that you lock around and that spindle feels like it's locked oh that was easy all right climb back down and get my spanner out that spindle is locked and let's see if we can get this thing loosened up so I got the iPhone up here where you can kind of see it. This is the spindle lock. Um, that's where the spindle will rotate. And you kind of click that around and it locks in place and that locks the spindle. So uh, anyway, that's how that works. Uh, spindle lock is locked. So when I got this machine, it came with a spanner wrench here. You notice the pin, this matches the pins up here in the spindle. And I'm gonna do this, see if I can get this to loosen up. Yeah. Yeah, it's sitting on there tight. But that's coming right around. Now it's nice and loose, I think. And I think this is gonna come right off. It is. And, all right, so got the little holes there that kind of slide over this 40 taper or 30 taper and then that catches up under the bottom and will tighten this up from that lip in the bottom. So that's kind of cool. This, uh, I don't think this is a standard K and T collar, but let me look here. You know, it's not going to fit on that one, but it does fit on that one. It's, it's made to fit on this. And that fits right up in there. Now I'm looking at this thing. And that looks kind of rough. Hmm. I was expected that to look a little bit better up in there. And if this should now, that would be the 30 taper collet going up in there. Let me get the right cover. So that is the piece for the collar here that fits on the bottom. Your collet goes up in there like such. And when you tighten this one up, it uh, tightens that collet up. And I'm hoping this, yep, same wrench fits. Good deal. So that was easy. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. I like it. So, and then that holds the 30 taper collet. Now I've only got one 30 taper collet uh, that fits this machine. When I got my set, it had two other collets that are in here. This one is a half inch collet, but it's broken. And this one looks like a three quarter collet and it is also broken. Then I had the five eighths collet that's intact. So I'm looking for a set of collets for this. I've got a lead on a set. Uh, but the deal's not completely worked out yet. Uh, let me just feel up in there. That spindle feels pretty smooth. I think I'm going to get something and just kind of get up in there and clean that. Make sure it's good and clean. And this one is, this collet is for a 5 8 inch shank. I'm going to go get a 5 inch gauge pin and put in there. And we're going to tighten it up and put an indicator on this and check and see if there's any run out in this spindle. And if there is, measure it and just kind of get an idea. But before I do, I want to make sure that's good and clean up inside uh, that spindle. It feels good, but I need to take a better look at it. Before I do, though, I will point out this is the uh, uh, holder for the 20 taper collet. So it's kind of like it's kind of like this collar here that fits over the 30 taper. This one fits over. If you notice, it fits down right there. Catches 
up underneath the bottom and you can uh, actually tighten this one up. Say so you can. There we go. When you tighten that one in there, you've got a secondary collet up underneath the bottom here, or secondary taper, and that's where the smaller 20 taper collets fit in there. And they made other um, tool holders that would be that this style that you could uh, put up in there as well. Uh, but this is a standard one, this uh, 20 taper one is a standard one that, that came with it. All right, let's uh, clean that spindle up and uh, check it out for run out. Just got a rag here and I'm just going to start by just sticking it up in there and trying to clean it out. It's not very greasy, not real bad. And I think what I'm going to do is take a little denatured alcohol Put on that. Just make sure we got that spindle good and clean. You know, I've this is not a machine I've used in the past. So I don't really know what its history is or it's been used, abused, what have you. So it's not going to hurt to give this a good cleaning. This collet um, appears to be in decent shape. You can see some marks down here on the bottom where that cap tightens up on it, but all in all, uh, it appears to be in good shape. So let me go get a uh, gauge pin and we'll put that up in there. All right, guys, one gauge pin. This is a, a 5 8 inch gauge pin, and we're just sliding it up in this collet. This gauge pin should be very round and uh, should be very, a very precision uh, item to indicate off of. And we'll just take our collar here, put up on there, kind of tighten this all up. And take my spanner wrench here. Put it on the other way, there we go. That should be tight enough. And now when that spins, that should be running very true. Let me uh, unlock the uh, spindle and we'll get a test indicator over here and give it a try. So I've got a tense indicator in here. This is a test indicator. Uh, this is for doing very accurate measurements. So. Notice zero to one. Zero to one there, the one is one thousandth of an inch. Uh, each line in there is a ten thousandth of an inch or one tenth of a thousandth. So, you know, in other words, it can measure very fine measurements. So each line in there, like I said, is a ten thousandth of an inch. And for you metric guys, that's 0 0.0025 millimeters. So pretty small number. Uh, I've got my it on my gauge pin, and we're going to turn the spindle on here in just a minute and see what kind of run out we've got. Uh, talking with uh, Ron Grundy, who uh, used to work for K&T and has worked on these mills, he says that when these mills were new, that the tolerance for the run out on them was two ten thousandths of an inch. Now, being that this is a used machine, you know, I'm going to probably hope is less than a thou. If, I'm, if it's less than a thou, I'm probably in great shape. Uh, just more than that, we probably need to look at some something else. I don't know. Uh, and then the other thing I'll mention is, is that we are measuring the runout on this gauge fin. The gauge fin is, is in excellent shape. What I don't know is what kind of condition the collet's in. It is a used collet. It's an old collet, probably original in this machine. So 1954. You know, if there is run out in here, how much is, is the spindle and how much is the collet? And uh, if there is a fair amount of run out, I'll probably, in fact, I'll probably do it anyway. We'll probably go up there and actually measure on the inside of the spindle and, and just get an idea there as well. 
Uh, although that can be a little misleading too because you've got contact all around that. I'm digressing. But this will give us a good idea. So let's just power it up and see what's going on. And that needle is moving around. And I'm just kind of looking at the highs and the lows. And it looks to me it's about eight ten thousandths. So again, that's uh, not the two ten thousandths it was when it was new, but it's less than a thou. That's pretty darn good for run out on any machine. Um, like I said, I think it's it's bouncing around eight eight tenths. So uh, let's uh, we'll turn that off. And as the speed went there, it was going a little bit crazy. But let's take the collet back out and actually measure the inside of the spindle and, and see what it's, see if, see if we get something similar. So I've got this test indicator up in here now touching on the back side of the, the spindle. So that's where that 30 taper is that we were talking about before. And let's see what it looks like. Wow. So that is much that is uh, close to the two ten thousandths that, that uh, from the factory. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it three tenths, but honestly, I don't know. That might be two tenths. There's not a whole lot in there, so that tells me a couple things. Number one, it tells me that the spindle in here is in excellent condition. I mean, it's really bouncing around two. Every now and then I'll see it go up to around three, but uh, I think it's well within, I think the spindle's in great shape. The collet, on the other hand, uh, you know, we got probably about five thousandths run out just in the collet based on the difference between the two here. So uh, finding some new collets for this thing probably is going to be in my near future. Wow. I, I'm impressed with that. That that blows me away. I was not expecting. I was not expecting that at all. Well, there you go. I am uh, tickled to death. I mean, this spindle looks like it's in great shape. You know, when when I got this machine and started cleaning it up, uh, it's quite evident that just by the signs of the scrape marks and other little telltale signs that this machine I don't think saw a whole lot of use. So, uh, you know, I'm not overly surprised that the spindle's in as good shape as it is, but at the same time, yeah, I, I really am. I mean, th this is almost in spec from the factory, if not in spec from the factory on the spindle measurement itself, right? That, that two tenths, you know, maybe three tenths, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm real tickled with that. That is excellent, excellent news. I'm also very happy with the fact that I was able to get that ER40 collet holder off of this and get back to the original um, collets that would have been with this machine. Um, why would I want to do that? Well, that ER40 collet holder, you know, I, I lost probably four inches, three, four inches of height with it. And with that drop in height, I mean, that's just, uh, that's just a place for error to get in there and get run, more run out than that spindle. Uh, if it's, if it's, you know, the, the longer your, your tool sticks out, the more it's going to run out. So getting back to the shorter setup, I think is ultimately going to be the best bet. Now, uh, do you need to probably pick up some new collets for this thing? Uh, like I said, I've got a lead on some used collets and I'm, and I'm going to probably get those. Uh, I've also found a gentleman that had a small production run of brand new collets made and he's selling um, some of those sets, and they're they're kind of expensive. But you know, I'm thinking I might go ahead and just bite the bullet and uh, get a brand new set of collets for this thing, and hopefully uh, be able to get the run out this in this collet kind of taken care of. This, I've only got one usable collet as it is right now, and uh, that would give me a whole set uh, if I go ahead and bite the bullet and get that. So that's something else that I'm uh, looking at real hard there. I'll also mention that uh, after I had my last video, I had a viewer reach out to me that had purchased a chairing head that fits on one of these. He said a long time ago, 
He said he bought it off of eBay, anticipating that one day he may get a 2D mill. He saw the saw the attachment and got it while the getting's good. Yeah, I've been guilty of that myself. When you see an attachment like a chairing head for one of these things, you know what it is. So like, one, I wouldn't mind getting one of, one of those machines. I have bought attachments to machines before I actually acquired the machine. And sometimes I actually did eventually get the machine and was glad I had done that. Other times, you know, I've gone a different route. You can always uh, flip those things and, and, and sell them later on. But uh, anyway, he said that he's had it for years and probably not going to get a 2D. And he offered me the chairing attachment for this machine, uh, which again kind of allows you to do arcs down in a hole. So it kind of dips in and comes back up. So, and you can adjust that. So a very unique and very, very, um, I think will be useful attachment. Uh, have not received it yet, but we've worked out a deal on it. It should be here before too much longer. When that gets here, of course, we'll come out here and play with that and try to see about getting it going as well. But uh, yeah, kind of tracking down some, some uh, attachments and accessories to kind of be able to use this machine like I want to and uh, just continuing to kind of play around with it. As soon as I can get some, some good collets, I want to get some work mounted on the table and just start really kind of playing around with it and exploring the capabilities of this machine because you really, really can do some, uh, some really neat things with it and looking forward to doing that down the road. But for now, my spindle's in good shape. Really happy to see that. And uh, that's gonna pretty much be it for this video. So with that, we are gonna sign off uh, as always, uh, thanks so much for, for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted to the channel. And a big, huge thank you out there to all the supporters of the site who support uh, the site through Patreon and PayPal, etc. Uh, again, we really could not do everything that we do out here without you guys' support. And uh, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. And with that, guys... We're going to sign off again. Thanks for watching.